Hey, what's up? This is Rick from pseudosamurai.com. I'm coming at you with another exciting tutorial. Um, today I'm going to cover uh, using a gamepad with, with uh, action script and flash. Um, so Adobe's working on basically being able to use joysticks and gamepads and whatnot. And they have some uh, support for it, but it's, it's, <clears throat> it's not really where it needs to be yet. So um, we're going to be using a, a third party. We're going to use a native extension. Uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, to start, I wanted to show you the gamepad I made. I spent probably way too much time uh, making, or rather recreating, my actual gamepad. Um, I have like a Logitech um, generic gamepad controller. And what I want to show you, what's going on here, is so I have my um, analog sticks right here. They're just some balls. They're named, you know, whatever. Um, next I have my buttons and they're they're all set to, if we look over here, they're not visible. Right? Um, so, or actually the buttons are on this layer, I'm sorry. So if I if I click here, it's not visible, but there's a button there. In fact, there's a lot of them. We've got uh, the directions and the start and the back and all that. All right, but they, I have them set to start as um, not visible. Um, then I just have sort of the back what they look like. I have my base. Uh, next, I have the triggers, and these are set to, um, they have zero alpha, right? So they're, they're just green buttons, but I'm gonna set them down to zero there, okay? And then finally I have the shoulder shoulder pad buttons there, okay? So that's, that's my gamepad. Everything's named and uh, set, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna export a, um, a SWIC. So if I go down to publish settings, uh, I can select SWIC, you know, I can have everything I want, but I just want the SWIC, and I just select an output. So um, I have it outputting my desktop. I already have it saved, um, but I can save it again. That's not a big deal. And I'll just hit publish. Boom. Okay. So um, now I have my gamepad SWIC on my desktop right here. Awesome. Okay. Next up, we need to go online. We're going to go over to GitHub, and uh, Alexander Omara made uh, Air Control, which is just a, you know, kind of an updated version of his previous uh, joystick controller called Joy Query. Um, it's pretty good. I think there are several native extensions for dealing with um, gamepads in Flash, but uh, this one works really well, so I like it. Um, and we're just at github.com, Alexander Omara. Uh, air control. Okay, and I'll have a link in the uh, in the description for the movie. I will also have a link to the uh, SWIC. I'll include the SWIC for the gamepad. Of course, if you don't have the same gamepad as me, uh, you know it won't look right. <laughs> um, so you might want to make your own. Anyway, in uh, in this uh, repository here, really all we need is this na native extension folder. Okay. And, and an example. We need one of the examples. Okay, but we're just going to download everything right here. We, we can hit uh, download zip and it'll start downloading. Now I've already downloaded it and uh, extracted it, so I'm going to cancel that. And it's, it's on my desktop here. Here it is. So here's my examples and then uh, my native extension. But in here is also um, you know some good documentation um, you know a lot of stuff uh, useful stuff in here but uh, let's let's move on okay so the first thing we're gonna do I'm gonna jump over flash builder is I actually have, have opened one of the examples here or kind of recreated it um, and I'll show you what it looks like we want to show all input right here and uh, if I go to source 
we can open that file and in here it has um, some information on how to um, import it into Flash Builder and then he has some code and, and whatnot up here or um, some comments rules uh, for using using his uh, extension so anyway um, the reason we want to run this okay, is uh, I'll just run this real quick is this going to give me information about my gamepad okay so over here we have um, f five axes right X Y Z R and U okay so we'll start with the axes on my controller okay and those are in reference to the analog sticks okay so my left stick if I push it directly to the right okay um, you'll notice that I'm getting a, a value of one right here and, it, and it's for my um, index of one right okay if I push it up um, see what I'm changing here so this would be my vertical direction okay so this is the the one index I'm sorry and this is the zero index so if I push it up I get a negative one if I push it down I get a positive one if I push it to the right I get a one and left is negative one right so this will give me the x and y axis for my um, left analog stick right here and it'll give me a value somewhere between negative one and one Okay. Now if I push my right analog stick, I get uh, to the right, I get a 1. If I go back, I get a negative 1, right? Up, negative 1, and down 1. So um, that's axes 3 and 4 right here. And we can see this right here, 3, 4, and then the value uh, where my, where my um, stick is at. Okay, that makes sense. So it skips 2. Well, where is 2? What is 2? Two is actually the trigger buttons. Um, they're sensitive, so instead of giving like a binary response, either on or on or off, like a button, it's going to give me um, some pressure sensitivity. So, you know, it'll detect if I'm just touching the trigger a little versus all the way, right? But again, it's going to give me somewhere between negative one and one, right here. It's not perfectly zero, but it's pretty close. So if I go to the left, if I hold the left trigger, it's going to be a positive value, and the right trigger is a negative value okay um, so it's important to understand kind of how these values work and what they're assigned to right yeah, x and y axis because if you mix those up you're gonna have a bad time right so um, next up will be buttons right uh, this controller has 10 buttons so I have four gamepad buttons and it'll tell me if it's down or not right so um, I'll hit the A button and that is the uh, element 0 and it's telling me that it's down. I'm currently holding it down. When I let go, it'll say it's not down anymore. False. Okay. So one would be, you know, the B button. Two, three. You know, I have my um, shoulder, shoulder buttons. I also have the analog sticks. I can click those in. Right. So there are ten buttons all together. Uh, next is the POV hats, and that would be the direction pad. So I have up, down, left, right. And what that, and that's giving me is an X value and a Y value. Um, if it's on, it's, it's 1. So th that's pushing to the right. The X is a 1. If I push to the left, X is a negative 1. Up, negative 1, down, 1, right? Uh, and this having both of those allows me to say have eight directions. So if I go down and to the right, I'll get a one and a one, right? Or a up and to the left, negative one, negative one. So um, you you definitely want to plug in your controller, see if you can get it working, and then read some of these values to uh, figure out how to um, you know use the controller in the code. Okay, it's it's helpful to write all this down. So you keep it straight in your head as you as you're uh, programming all this. Okay, so I'm going to close this, and uh, we're just going to close that project. Okay, and we're going to make a new project. Okay, 
So we're gonna make our uh, our gamepad here. So new um, action script project. I'm gonna make sure I'm uh, doing a desktop and air application, and <coughs> I'm gonna call it. Um, I don't know what to call it. How about gamepad? All one word. Oh, no, that's not going to work. I already have a project called gamepad. How about um, game controller? That'll work. I'll hit next. Okay, so in my library, I want to add uh, two SWICs. Um, first SWIC is the gamepad obviously my graphics and then I also want to add um, if I go into the air control I can go to native extension air control and then in the bin we have a SWIC and we'll add that okay and then we'll go over here to the native extensions we're gonna add a folder air control um, native extension and then air control and then A and E that one right there, the A and E folder. Hit OK, and then make sure the update air application strip descriptor is um, checked. Hit OK, and then uh, we can hit finish. Now, before I start going, um, this this was an error that I kept getting that was driving me crazy. Uh, you want to make sure that you include the native extension in the build packaging. So if I go to uh, the properties build package native extension and check that hit OK um, that's that's gonna so if you're getting this weird error um, that might be it so make sure you do that okay all right awesome I think we're ready to go I think so okay so first thing we want to do is just get our graphics together right so um, we're gonna call it pad okay and that is going to be um, so if I look at my uh, reference library here my gamepad SWIC um, I'm actually exporting this so if I go to properties you have to export for action script on frame one and I gave it a class name of gamepad like that okay uh, that's bad um, naming convention right there I mean uh, you're supposed to capitalize a class and whatever but that's what I did so that's that's what it is All right, so I'm gonna make pad a new gamepad like that okay and we wanna cast it as a movie clip right and then uh, control one will create an instant variable for pad and it needs to be of type movie clip Cool, so we've got our gamepad. Next, what we want to do is we want to place it on the stage. Uh, so pad.x is going to equal stage, stage uh, width uh, divided by 2. And then uh, pad.y stage dot stage height divided by two. Use those bitwise operators. Makes it feel cool. Uh, and then we're just going to add child. And then we're going to add pad, which uh, kind of sounds dirty, uh, but I'm not going to think about it. Um, we're going to add that to the stage. Okay, great. Next, what we're going to do is um, we're going to listen. Okay, so we're going to listen to that native event, or um, native extension, I mean. Uh, troll. So we'll uh, <coughs> import that, and we're going to listen. Uh, add event listener, and we want to attach the controller, right? So that's going to be of type error. Control uh, event, right? Dot attach. Right. So if if a controller gets attached, we want to know. If it gets uh, detached, we want to know. Okay, so and then we're gonna call something. Um, we'll call it 
control controller attach. Why not? Just like that. Okay, and I'm gonna copy that line because we wanna we also want to listen if uh, the controller is removed, detached. Okay. Uh, erase my comma there. Okay, good. So um, we're also going to listen uh, for the enter frame. So stage down at end. That listener, we we, we want a game loop, so we want it, um, enter frame, and we'll just call that loop. Okay, so control one will generate the handler. Call it E. Um, that's fine. We'll come up to the uh, attach. Control one, generate handler. Uh, e, and this is a type error. Control. Awesome, awesome. So we're cruising right along. Okay. So first thing, let's um, let's listen if it's attached. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a switch statement, and we want um, the type of the event, right? So if it's case that dot attach this is what we're going to do right? if it's uh, detach this is what we're going to do right so okay good very nice space is out a little bit okay so um, if it's attached first thing we want to do is uh, we're actually going to get um, we're going to listen to the three types of events that can happen on our controller. Okay, so the three types uh, I kind of already covered in the um, in the gamepad example. Um, you have the axis event that's when an analog stick's moved. We have a button event that's obviously a button, and then the POV that's the direction pad. Okay. So we'll say e controller dot uh, add event listener, and we want so um, I don't know why I did that. Uh, we want uh, air control controller event. So air control controller event. It's a mouthful, and we'll do um, we'll do axis first, and we'll call something called uh, controller event. That sounds good, and we'll just copy that line and change up our events. So next, we'll listen to the button event, and then finally. POV change. Okay, good. Um, and we will make a uh, control one. We'll generate the handler. And this is of type air control controller event. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, the other thing we want to do. Okay, when the controller is attached, um, is we want a, a reference to um, the starting position of our analog sticks. Okay, so um, let's make left origin. Okay, is equal to add dot uh, left stick dot uh, x and this will be a point so let's make this a point 
paint so home copy paste change you to y change you to y so let's make that and it is of type point okay and then uh we need to import point there we go okay so we've got the x and the y and then let's do right origin dot x and that is pad dot right stick dot x and dot y okay cool and then we'll uh, create that variable Okay, good. So um, we just we want to know kind of where the artwork starts, like the x and y position, so that when we start moving it around, we can always bring it back to the center. Okay. So let's uh, start with that now. Um, copy when it's detached. We want to stop listening for that event. So move event listener. Just like that. Okay, so good. Um, we also might want to just tell ourselves what's going on. So we might say uh, attached and detached. Like that. Okay, good. So um, this will let us know when we plug in our controller what's going on. We also set up some event listeners um, or remove the event listeners. Uh, okay, good. So uh, it's been attached. We've got, and we get a control event. So we want to come down here and figure out what's going on. Okay. Um, so, first thing we want to do is uh, another switch statement. Switch, and we're going to do the type again because we need to know what event happened. Is it an axis change, a button change, or a POV change? Okay. So we have the case of that dot axis change, right? Three possible events. Get some space here. Okay, so um, dot button and dot POD. Okay, great. So start with the axis. Okay, we're actually going to want to do another switch statement because there are five possibilities in here. Okay, so switch e dot element right uh, oh sorry element index is what I wanted. Okay, so um, before we should have written down all that. So we should know that um, we have five cases, case zero. So case zero, that is our left analog sticks um, X position. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're just going to say um, we're going to make a variable called left X, and we're going to set it equal to the position of the element. So E dot, whoops, element position like that. Okay, and then we'll make an instance variable right here, and it's going to be a number. Whoops, number. Okay, so that'll do. And then let's copy that. Now, K 
case one, this is our Y of our left analog stick. Okay. Again, we just want the position. We'll make another uh, instance variable. So number. Okay. Now case number two is our um, our uh, uh, our trigger buttons. Okay. So that's kind of a special case. I'll come back to that in one second. Okay. Um, so case number three, right? That is going to be our y position on the right axis. So this, I mean, so it goes x, y, and then it goes y, x. So it's important that you did that initial check. That could get kind of confusing. So right uh, y is equal to um, basically this. Should I copy that? Good. Copy that. Right, so that's an x. And we just need to make our variables. Um, number. Um, number. All right, good. So we get the uh, the number, either uh, one or negative one, and it'll tell us our position. Okay, so uh, here in case two, right? Basically, we have to split it. Okay, because either we're affecting the left trigger or the right trigger, and the split is at zero. Okay, um, so I could say um, e dot element position um, is greater than or equal to zero. And we're going to use a tertiary operator. So if you don't know how this works, it's basically like an if-else statement. So if this, right, question mark, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to say pad dot left trigger um, dot alpha, right? So we want it to fade in. So if it's if it's greater than zero, we just need to set it to that. Right, so alpha, uh, right here. Okay, cool. So the the harder you press it, the closer this gets to one, which means the alpha will, the closer it gets to opacity, or um, yeah, opaque versus uh, transparency, right? So else, and then we want kind of the same thing, only on the right side. Now the problem here, though, is this is going to be a negative number. Um, obviously, we can't do that with the alpha, so we just want to um, get the absolute value, right? Strip it of its, um, you know, po negative or positive. Okay, so that should do it. It's kind of a long piece of code, but should do the trick. <laughs> okay. So next up, we have our buttons. Well, let's do the POV. Now buttons. That's what's next, right? Where are we? Right here, button change. OK. So once again, we're going to do another switch statement. And this time, what we want to do is switch the element index. Right? OK. And we have 10 buttons, so we need to case 0 through 9. Okay, but I'm going to add in, uh, so the 0 button is pad dot a button dot visible is equal to e dot element. So I'm, I'm testing to see if the element is down, right? So if it is down, it's going to return true, okay? 
so th that means I want to make the A button visible so when it's down this is visible when it's not down it returns false this is not visible okay so that's that's how that works so I copy that and we need let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine nine of them All right and then we've got a one two three four I know you're listening to me count But there we go. Okay, good. So we have ten buttons. Okay, so um, one through three here. These first four buttons are just the uh, the actual buttons on the controller. But four is actually the left shoulder. Okay. And I uh, I don't want to make it visible or not visible. What I want to do is just shift its Y position so it looks like it's being pressed down. If that makes sense. Okay. So. Uh, what I want to do is, oh, also I need to change this, sorry. That's a B button, this is the X button, that's the Y button. Okay, so uh, I kind of need the starting position for that graphic. Okay, and I can just uh, get that up here before I do anything. Um, so just right up here, I have the left, uh, really it doesn't matter because they both have the same Y position, so I'm just going to call it the shoulder, shoulder Y. Oh, let's make that a variable, sorry. Shoulder Y and it's just going to be an int, right? And this is just going to be equal to um, pad dot, we'll just say left shoulder dot y. Okay. So back down to 4 right here. Um, so what we'll do is we'll say pad dot left shoulder. Y is going to be equal to, and then we're just going to do a tertiary operator here. So if it's down, we want the shoulder Y plus 6. Okay. If it's not down, we just need to undo that. So shoulder Y minus 6. Or maybe we should just do it like this. Now plus equals six. Going off script. Negative six. Let's see if that works. Okay. Uh, and we're gonna do the same thing for uh, this one right here. Only we want the right shoulder. So. Uh, We'll hold off on that. If it doesn't work, I know how to make it work. But if it does, well, it'll be good. Okay, good. So um, that's the shoulder buttons. Next, we have the um, the start button and the, the the like select button. Okay. So six is it's actually I called it our back button. That's what it says on the controller. And seven is the start button. Okay. So those will just go down. Um, 8 and 9 are the analog stick buttons, okay? And so we want to do something similar where uh, we adjust their size. So we're just going to make it look smaller when I press it, okay? So we want left stick um, and not visible. We want the scale x is going to be equal to. Um, the scale y and that is going to be equal to so once again we'll use the uh, tertiary we'll say um, you know if it's down it's going to be 0.9 that will make 0.8 actually 
and if it's up it's at 1, so the normal size. Okay. So we do that again and we just need to change this to right stick. Okay. Alright, so my buttons are good. Ten buttons done, just a little bit more. Okay. So next up we have our uh, our direction pad, our POV change. And once again we're gonna we're gonna do a switch statement. Okay, so um, switch and we actually have two switches, right? We have our element uh, X and our element Y, okay? Because we can get three values from uh, the X and three values from the Y, okay? <coughs> so our cases are case one, break, case negative one, and case um, zero. Right. Okay. And that needs to be a, a colon. Okay, good. So, in the case of a one, that means our right direction button is being pressed, so we just want to turn on that graphic. So, right direction visible is equal to true. And then negative one is our left direction, right? So we've got a left direction and a right direction, okay? Now in the case of zero, we want both of them to be false, right? Okay, so if nothing's being pressed. Now we'll just copy you. And we'll take a look at the Y. And then, so in the case of one, that's going to be down, right? And negative one is going to be up. And then, just like that. So uh, we're handling all the input now. Awesome. Okay. Next thing we need to do, so all the buttons will work, um, almost everything will work, but the analog sticks, if I try and move them, nothing's going to happen, okay? I need to update their um, <clears throat> their position every frame, okay? And actually, first thing I'm going to update is uh, my air control. So it's kind of pulling the, the pad, just checking, right? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to make a function called update stick. And uh, we'll, we'll create the method right here. Okay. And so in here, what I want to do is set the pad dot left stick dot uh, x equal to our starting position, right? Or I'm sorry, not our starting position. First, um, what we want is um, basically a percentage value of how far I want the stick to be able to move, right? So, if uh, I want the stick to move 20 pixels over, that would be sort of my radius, okay? And I'm going to multiply my radius by the input I'm getting, okay? So if I have I have my left x, right, times my radius, so let's uh, make a variable called radius here. So basically if, if uh, 20 is the maximum amount, uh, the highest left x will ever be is 1, okay, so 1 times 20, we got 20, so that's the max amount, but if, if it's, say, I'm only holding the analog stick a little bit over, you know, 0.3 or something, it'll multiply it and, and it'll give me a percentage of the maximum distance I want it to travel, okay? But I also need to add it to the original position, right? So um, what do we call that? Left org 
dot x, right? And then I'll make the radius real quick. Um, it's going to be an int, and we'll call it 20, okay? Just like that. So we'll copy this. Uh, one for each direction, basically. So x, y, and then this is my right stick. would be right x and right y. Change that to y. Um, and then this is y. This is y. And then these are all right. So um, you know it'll uh, it'll move it around, but it'll constrain it to my radius right here. Okay. So I think I'm pretty much ready to go. Let's give it a try. So I'll save that, and we'll run it as a desktop application. Oh, you know what I forgot to do. Hmm is um, set my Swift metadata here. So uh, let's see, we want, what do we want? Okay, we'll set the width equal to 800. Height equal to um, frame rate uh, equal to uh, it could be high like 60 but really for this 30 will work okay, and um, that's probably good okay set that and it's giving me a complaint over here of my uh, my sticks, but uh, we'll see if it gives me the same complaint again. It is interesting. I don't think it likes the uh, the point. So let's just change this to Get rid of these and get rid of the point and make our number. Or sorry, these should be ints, I guess. Hopefully, it'll work this time. Uh, oop, we got an error somewhere else. Where's our error? What are you down here? Oh, yeah, I gotta change these over. So X, Y, X, Y. Alright, in theory, we should be good to go. <gasps> Yay, it worked. Okay, so it told me it was attached. So, real quick, I'll do a test. This is going to be loud, but I'm going to unplug it. And right down here in our console, we've got detached. Good, if I plug it in, and it lets me know it's been attached. Very nice. OK, good. So here's our controller. Uh, my analog sticks are not where they're supposed to be, but they will snap into place as soon as I uh, touch them. Maybe. Maybe not. All right, let's figure out what to do there. So I think if I hmm, so maybe let's 
move this stuff here. And I'll just move it into here. And I will update stick once. See if I can't move everything where it needs to be. All right, let's try it now. Man, something is wrong. Uh, let's move those out of the way real quick. I'll fix those in a second, but let's make sure all the other buttons are working. So my max and, yep, those are working. Uh, those are working. Start button, select, very nice. Direction pad. That looks good. Very nice. Okay, so let's figure out what's going on with my... Um, sticks here so left X left Y right X right Y that's right right org huh hold on uh, okay so um, the problem I'm having is uh, where I'm where I'm setting up my sticks here I need to do this sooner so I'm gonna get those copy that and I actually don't need this line anymore. So um, when the controller first attaches, that's when I'm going to get my uh, starting positions. Okay. Actually, uh, let's see if we can get them even sooner up here. Okay. So that's all good. Now, uh, something I caught while I was going through here is in my, um, my axis change, this case right here is still zero. So I need to make sure that that's a four. Okay, so good. Now let's, uh, let's run it. Okay, so the, the sticks are still starting in the center. Um, so I need to fix that, but after I update, now they're constrained. Okay, so if I click on it, it shrinks like it's supposed to, and I can move them around anywhere I want. Have my buttons, um, those buttons, and then if I slowly pull the trigger on the right side, notice that it gets more and more green, and the left side one more green. I can't do both triggers at the same time. That's a limitation of the triggers. Right? But I could like hold down. So anyway, um there we go. Uh I think the problem, the reason they're starting in the middle, uh the analog sticks, is because the enter frame loop calls update stick before it has a left X and a Y so if let me think if I just start these off as zero and try it one more time hey look at that they start in the right spot very nice so a uh, few little troubles there but uh, overall I got I got it working so now um, you can have controller, um, use a controller in your flash games. That um, Unfortunately, you can't do this for a web, like a browser. Um, it has to be an air application. But uh, still very cool, very cool. Uh, opens up some possibilities, seems very responsive, I mean, really responsive hold down buttons um, you, you know you can do multiple controls all at once no problem um, so yeah pretty cool um, hopefully you learn something and maybe you have an idea of how you could integrate a gamepad or a joystick into your next game so uh, good luck and uh, I'll see you guys next time